Hello friends and welcome back to Mrs. Carnes and Me. All good things must come to an end and our time at Culloden House Hotel is over. After a wonderful breakfast, we made our way to the train station in downtown Inverness. Inverness train station was opened in 1855 and today accommodates over a million people on their trains each year. We are taking the train back to Edinburgh and our trip should take around three hours. This train trip allowed us to see some of the most stunning Highland scenery and we just loved seeing the countryside by rail. It's been a uh, sort of a travel day today. We woke up in the Culloden House in Inverness in, Mrs. Highlands. in the Highlands. Mrs. Carnes had a great idea and that was to take a train back to Edinburgh instead of making me drive the three and a half or four hours. It was a three and a half hour train ride. The trains in the UK work amazingly well. They're comfortable, um, on time, well done. Well done, Scott Rail. Well. Except there was no beverage Except service. Except there, we, we did buy a first class ticket thinking that we'd get a snack and a drink. But there was no snack and no drink. They did apologize for that. We well, can't even get a drink. That was what was bad. So, uh, I would have paid for a drink. I will learn next time to get myself a bottle of water or something to drink before I get on the train and take it away. It was okay. So we made it back to Edinburgh. We checked into what we think is the same room we were in before at the uh, Waldorf Astoria and um, we walked down the street to the Red Squirrel to have some some uh, an early dinner I guess or whatever you would call this it's about 4 30 and uh, we had breakfast at the hotel but we got some halloumi fried cheese and some haggis bites is what we're starting here with so uh, I've got myself a local hazy IPA we're going to Get our, get our last night in Edinburgh off to a good start. Good? Are you good? Haggis. This is the Scotsman. It has haggis and it's venison. Mine was a, a lamb. After our early dinner, we decided to go explore some more of beautiful Edinburgh. We soon found ourselves walking through Prince's Street Gardens. The gardens were created in the 1820s following the long draining of the Nor Lock and the building of Newtown. Lying in the shadow of Edinburgh Castle, the gardens run along the south side of Prince's Street. The park is filled with beautiful fountains, statues, and monuments to famous Scots. And some kids just having fun chasing the birds. The seating for the Royal Edinburgh Tattoo peeked over the trees and of course Edinburgh Castle stood guard over everything. The Gardener's Cottage or the Gingerbread Cottage as it is affectionately known seems to be the home of Great Aunt Lizzie. Climbing the stairs, we find the famous floral clock commemorating Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee.
The Scott Monument, erected in the early 1800s, is one of Scotland's most iconic landmarks and shouldn't be missed as you stroll through this garden. This monument honors Sir Walter Scott, the famous Scottish writer. The monument is made of sandstone that has blackened over the years. In case you're wondering where all the pigeons go to have their afternoon snack, it's at St. Cuthbert's Cemetery. <laughs> so this says his remains are injured 58 feet north from this stone and 5 feet south from the first cover of the drain. St. Cuthbert's is a parish church of the Church of Scotland. It was founded in the 7th century and claims to be the oldest Christian site in Edinburgh. Above the wainscot, the walls are decorated with an alabaster frieze depicting the Last Supper. The murals in the church are exquisite. St. Cuthbert's is also known for its ornate furnishings. And the stained glass windows of St. Cuthbert's are by Tiffany's. Our room at the Waldorf Astoria overlooks St. Cuthbert's, and I've been looking down on it during our stay, so it was really fun to go down and see it in person. From the window, I could also see this fair, so we stopped by to have a quick look. After all that exploring, me wanted a break, so we visited the Cali for a drink. Gin and tonic with apple. Something different. Everywhere I've been in Scotland, back then, they give me a few drinks. You may have to uh, become a fan. I'm kind of a fan of this lady. And her ruby. Our evening ended with some last looks at Edinburgh at night. And just like that, it was morning and time for us to make our way back to the airport to make the long journey home. I will never forget this view. Well, good morning, friends. We are in Edinburgh Airport. We left our hotel uh, early this morning. We are going to catch our flight back to Chicago. Um, the United staff was wonderful at check-in. They uh, were very helpful. Checked our bags straight to St. Louis. Let's hope they get there. And uh, we went through Fast Track Security. Had a little hand sanitizer issue going through there, but we got that ironed out. And we just stumbled across this new lounge, uh, the Aspire Premium Lounge. No, the Premium Lounge is what it's called. Brand new We Gold, my American Express Platinum got me in here. Beautiful little lounge, and it's very, very good. We're going to get ourselves a, something to eat, something to drink, and go get on our flight to head toward Chicago. Thanks for joining us, and please be sure to tune in next week as we explore a brand new airport lounge in Edinburgh and make our way home. We are living the good life. Slanjava.